join me in welcoming Dr. Saul Griffiths. Uh, so thank you. I've, I've never done this talk in less than an hour before, so I bought my egg timer. Um, this is actually an IV drip, and this is oil. Hopefully that will take about 15 minutes to, uh, to drip into there, and you'll learn of the significance of that shortly. Um, Okay, so you all hear about this thing called climate change quite often, and you all hear about the other concerns about energy independence and getting off foreign oil. Um, you're probably very familiar with the concepts of carbon footprint, and now it's very, very fashionable for anyone who thinks a lot about energy to have some grand plan to save the day. But what you probably want to know is, if you're anything like me, is how do I fit in? What is my role in this? And what you'd probably need are tools for making the right consumer choices to, you know, to actually end up with the climate outcome that you'd like. So what I'm actually going to show today is something called Watson.com, which we've been developing with uh, Rafi Kokorian at Synthesis Studios. And it's really a tool, internet tools for solving, solving climate and energy changes um, using everyone. The real underlying goal of it is to measure everything that is measurable and make measurable everything that is not. So actually, how do you measure all of the energy use in your life and its impact on the world? And we're going to use sort of social network tools and a wiki methodology to get all of that complex data. And we'll get to that towards the end of the talk. So this really came from my personal desire to understand my relationship to climate and energy. And that really is this question, how much power do I use everywhere in my life? And I started about 18 months ago to figure out for everything that I do how much power that it uses. So you, you, you'll understand shortly why I use power instead of carbon, but you can see this is sort of examples of the calculations you might want to do. I'll point over here, maybe over here. So, you know, you do a lot of things monthly, like flying um, or yearly. You can add up the number of miles you fly in a year, how many megajoules per kilometer it takes, and you get an estimate of the amount of power for that. You do things monthly, like get your electricity bill. You can convert that also into power. And you do daily things like drinking a bottle of energy drink, and you can also do that in power. So then you've reduced the, the problem of counting all the energy use in your life to one of addition. So you take everything you do, you add them all up, and you get an estimate of the amount of power you use in your life. And so for the completely obsessive, compulsive, anally retentive, um, this is actually a picture of my life. And you'll see at the bottom here, my life uses around about 17,027 watts, or 17 kilowatts. And I'll give you a sense of how much that is shortly. But where is it all used? So each one of these blue slices of this pie is an individual flight. And in fact, one of the biggest energy users in my life in 2007 was a single uh, return trip to Sydney. Down here, this is the energy consumption of uh, driving each of the five cars that I occasionally drive. I can also see little pieces of the pie here which are uh, heating my house and cooking and taking showers. Um, this red piece here is the heat and the electricity that I use at work. This huge big green thing up here is kind of interesting. That's actually where your tax dollars go. So before you even wake up in the morning as an American, the government is using some energy on your behalf. And in fact, it's probably about 35% of your power. And you will, we'll figure out why that is interesting in a minute. Just one piece of that government thing, all of the roads that we drive on every day, um, is about 300 watts. So for the average American, that means 2 or 3% of the energy you use is just in having the roads exist before you've even driven on them. And then this huge, big, sort of pinkish slice of my pie here, that's all the stuff that I own and the things that I do. Like, in fact, you can see my bicycles, the, the laptop that this is being run off. This is the embodied energy in all of those objects amortized over their lifetime. So 17,000 watts, is that a lot? Well, here's the per capita power consumption for a whole lot of countries in the world. America is in 10th. Canada uses a little more. They're like Americans who live somewhere colder. Um, the US average is about 11.4 kilowatts. The global average is about 2,200 watts. Why is that important? Well. Um, Currently, the world uses about uh, 18 terawatts of power, 
Um, a lot of it is just in plant matter that we burn in the developing world, but largely in industrialized nations, we get our energy from gas, coal, oil, a fair amount from nuclear and some from hydro. Remember that number, about 16 or 18 terawatts. What is the result of the way we produce our power? This is actually the graph. This sh shows you all of the carbon dioxide that every country in the world has produced since the Industrial Revolution. So America might have been 10th in per capita things, but you know when climate change happens and the detective is trying to figure out who did it, um, number one here is United States by an overwhelming margin. Russia, China is rapidly gaining in third place, Germany in fourth. And really, the top four countries here have produced more than half of the carbon dioxide ever put into the atmosphere. That results in this. Um, this is the scariest graphic I could find for the actual measured climate change that we are seeing. For every large red dot here, that's one degree Celsius, or a little more than two degrees Fahrenheit temperature increase every decade for the last 25 years. So it, in short, anywhere you see a huge red dot, the temperature measured on the ground, average temperature, increased by five or six degrees Fahrenheit in the last 25 years. So it's extremely real and happening very quickly. All right, but back to why we measure things in energy. Um, current demand measured by the uh, International Energy Agency is 16 terawatts. It was a little more in the previous graph because they don't count uh, animal dung and, and uh, forest wood. Um, if you wanted to solve for climate change, and say, choose a target of 450 parts per million. That's not a great outcome. That'll mean two degrees temperature increase. You can only burn three terawatts worth of fossil fuels uh, in 25 years' time. That's what the target needs to be. We already get about a one and a half terawatts from the existing nuclear and hydro. So what does this mean? Take current demand, subtract the amount of power we can get from fossil fuels and hit a good climate target, subtract the existing stuff, so we need 11 and a half terawatts of new energy in 25 years. That's pretty scary. Turns out you might look to all the different renewables. Which ones can do it? Well, there's 85,000 terawatts of solar. That's great. There's tons of that. There's a huge amount of wind. There's 32 terawatts of geothermal. Not a lot in waves. Not a lot in tides. Not much in all the rivers in the world. And 65 terawatts of photosynthesis. That's if you burn every plant on the planet every year. So there's actually not that much of that either. Um, anyway, but the good news is there is a ton in solar and wind, so we, we might even be able to do it. Uh, but this is really the crux of why you want to start measuring things in power or watts instead of in carbon. Even though carbon is the problem, if we solve for carbon, we create for ourselves some new problems. This is a very unusual map of the world. That square that you see there represents the land area of every country in the world. So the biggest country is Russia. In square kilometers, it's that vertical stripe, followed by China, Canada, USA, Brazil, and Australia. I've superimposed on this map, uh, uh, on this map a new continent that I call Renewistan. Um, Renewistan would be using better than the best technology for wind, solar, and hydro and biofuels at massive scale if we deployed them today. And so for 10 terawatts of Renewistan, it would be the seventh largest country in the world. It would be a continent. And that's with the average person in the world using 2.2 kilowatts. If everyone used in the world used as much power as me, it would be eight times that size. So basically, you'd cover nearly all of the major land masses, or half of them, with solar cells, with wind power and hydro, um, in order to power everyone at my lifestyle. So that's unlikely. So this starts to make you think, oh, we should think about conserving the amount of power we use, maybe about reducing all of these pieces of, in your life. And then you'll need some tools for that. So I'm now going to go to a website called What's On. This is a website that's in uh, public alpha, I think we call it, which means less mature than beta. But I guess everyone in this audience knows that. So here's my life. Um, you'll notice that my life is a little more energy intensive now uh, than it was in my last slide. This is a tool that all of you can log on. You can create a username, and you can start analyzing how much energy you use in your life. So you can go to the flying. Um, you can actually input the number of flights you want. On the wiki side of this, um, we actually all of the data here is going to be people will be able to debate it. So if you think that JetBlue uses less energy per mile than uh, Virgin Atlantic, which is true, then 
you can actually modify these numbers. So that way, the, the accuracy and the resolution of this website will increase over time. So that's how much I do in flying. Um, looks a little familiar in terms of it's similar to a, a carbon calculator, except I guess the really unique thing is um, using the wisdom of the crowds to get more accuracy. You can go to food, and you can actually choose your... Uh, oh. Slow internet connection, I thought. All right, so here's my personalized diet. I could choose to be completely vegan and see that that actually would reduce the amount of power in my life, or I could be a heavy meat eater and find out that it's in fact 615 watts, but I might think that I'm, you know, I'm a 220 pound guy and this is based on the average American diet, so it should all be more than that. And so you can now actually play with how the personal things like your diet actually impact your power consumption. And then one of the commuting is all the driving. I won't show you that. You can imagine that housing is the energy in your house. Government, this is basically your tax dollars at work. 3.2 kilowatts for me. Um, that, you know, there's an interesting thing. If the, if that, this really tells you the US government spends more energy on your behalf before you wake up every morning than the average person in the world uses total. So if we really get serious about reducing energy use, there's a lot of people are going to want to lobby this section. Probably one third of that government section is uh, military, one third ish is social security, and one third ish is healthcare. So we may have to look very carefully at those things in a carbon constrained world. But finally, let's go to this is my favorite section. This is where I think we need to do a huge amount of work. This is all the stuff that I own. As you can see, I'm a book nerd. I own a thousand books. I own four cars. I've got a mobile phone. I've got all of these various objects. But this, the reason my number keeps going up is I keep forgetting that I own things. Um, so I'm going to create a new item because I just noticed that I haven't yet put a surfboard into my life. And I own a few surfboards. So let's create a surfboard, generic surfboard. And I know that a surfboard weighs about 9 kilograms. I know that they only last me about five years before they fall off the top of the car as I'm driving down the highway. Um, I know they're made a little bit out of plastic, and they're about 25% glass, and they're mostly polyester. And I know that they're mostly, most of mine are actually made in Australia and are shipped to me by sea, so they come 6,000 kilometers to get to me. And we find out that, in fact, owning one surfboard contributes 2.8 watts to your life. Now, you can go and do your house and your car and everything, but now that I've created this instance of a surfboard, anyone else who goes to this website and realizes, oh, I forgot to add a surfboard to my life, now can add this surfboard. And as you can see here, you can actually look at this surfboard as a percentage of your daily value if you choose 10,000 watts as your daily value. Arguably, this daily value should be, this should be 2,200, not 10,000. But hopefully, the wiki aspect will do that. So I'm going to add that to my stuff. And uh, we can return to my info. So you can imagine how we will now propagate all of the products of the world into this um, as people add more and more and more. And now you can start to do some interesting things. Because we measured um, life in terms of power, I can say, you know, what is my life equivalent in terms of incandescent light bulbs? And it turns out that. I am behind me, the glow, the aura is not genius. It's actually the 302 virtual 60 watt light bulbs that are constantly burning to support my lifestyle. Or I might say, if I needed to buy a wind turbine tomorrow to power my life, how big would it be? It turns out I need a 15 meter wind turbine just to power me. That's not going to fit in suburban San Francisco. So maybe I should try some solar cells. All right, let's go with a solar panel. How big is my personal solar panel? I need about 604 square meters of solar panel. Now, my landlord just installed 10 square meters of solar panel on my roof, and that's about the capacity of the roof. So where, in fact, you know, where does that other 590 square meters go? Perhaps you want to actually reduce your, your power consumption down here. And then just for kicks, because I noticed my drip has dripped a little too slowly, you could also, for example, measure your power consumption in oil. So let's do something everyone's familiar with. You all know what a pint looks like. 
how many pints of oil do I use in a year? Turns out it's a few. And so every year to support my lifestyle, I'm burning the equivalent of 32,000 pints a year. Turns, about, turns out there's about 32,000 periods of 15 minutes in your life every year, which means I'm burning this just to support my lifestyle, and everyone here in the audience I think will have a lifestyle similar to mine. You're burning this oil every year and putting that CO2 into the atmosphere. And so I think we need to look very carefully at how to actually reduce energy consumption and build out the right tools to do so. Um, so I'm going to wrap up there. Thanks. <laughs>